you guys know I love cross-checking um, from uh, single frequency to multi-frequency. Um, here's, here's just a really interesting target that um, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but uh, I know it's going to be interesting because check it out what it reports in 15 kilohertz. Look at the arrows on that. Watch the detonator. We'll turn 45. Watch what multi does. Now, if you remember what I said in my other videos, if multi shows lower arrows and below 10, it's gonna be tinfoil 99% of the time. And if it, if it sounds louder too, but in this case, they both sound about the same and they're both showing the same depth arrows Let's turn 45. So it's it's breaking up if I turn 45 on both of them, which means it could be a big piece of iron because it's so jumpy. Let's see what it is. Okay, so that was that piece of tinfoil, only about four or five inches down with the 15 inch coil. Interesting. It's quite thick tin foil, you see? And it's, it's all wadded up too. Okay, cool. So I've got one of these interesting targets here where you, a lot of times I say, you know, you cross check in um, multi-frequency, uh, multi so I hunt in 15 and I cross-check in multi. So right now we're in 15 kilohertz and we found something that's kind of an iffy target, jumping a lot, but it sounds pretty good. There's a lot of iron mixed in here. Let's turn 45 degrees. See how I'm moving the coil a little bit up and a little bit down? Just to feel the target out. Those dramatic number jumps from 28 to 17 scare me a little bit, but I'm trying to be really surgical with my coil. So if I switch to multi-tone, uh, multi-tone, multi-frequency is what I meant to say, watch what happens to the, the signal. It stabilizes more. Huge stabilization. Now, if I were to guess, the way that was jumping in in 15 kilohertz and stabilized in multi, this is probably a pull tab. So, again, we're using these the single frequency and the multi frequency to complement each other. We're trying to learn from them here. Neither is better than the other. They're just telling us different things and we're here to learn what they're telling us. So uh, let's find out what this target is. Okay, so about four or five inches down, a beaver tail, oops. 
Now, when I turned 45 degrees with multi-frequency, it was still hitting 1213, perfect 1213. So this is just something we can learn. Whenever I dig a gold ring, multi-frequency and single frequency are stable. Now that can't be true for every situation because sometimes there's other stuff on the hole. I'm not saying they're giving me the same numbers, I'm saying they're giving me more stable numbers. In this situation, single frequency was jumping more from the, the high 20s, mid 20s to the, to the 17 range. Multi-frequency was giving me a perfect stable number. So something wasn't right there, but I still wanted to dig because the signal was still sounded clean. Um, and we're doing some experimentation. So on to the next. So I just found an excellent example of what it's like to switch between multi-frequency and 15 kilohertz when you, or, or any single frequency when you think you have a good target. A single frequency is going to report that target like this. Look at the depth meter. Jump, starting to jump. Now watch what happens when I switch to multi-frequency. Look at the depth meter. Pivoting. Back to 15. Mm, look at that. got super broken up. Okay, let's, let's dig this to what it is. Okay, here we are. Single frequency was reporting it as a, what, like a copper penny or a, um, maybe a dime, maybe a, a, a wheat penny, and multi-frequency took it way down below 10. Both were showing depth meters quite deep. And here we go, only about, I don't know, five or six inches down. I think that was it right there. It's an old piece of bunched up aluminum. Small, thin. This actually came out flat, I just bunched it up myself. Uh, there you go. That's a situation where multi was actually reporting correctly. But we've seen in my deeper depth tests that multi can also report deep aluminum um, the same consistency, but it it was a 12 inch or a 14 inch silver dime. So. We're trying to distinguish when to dig and when not to dig. So we were just getting a um, 16, 17, some lower numbers, maybe 14, 13, and got a buffalo nickel.
it was a little difficult to hear this signal sound like there's something else in the hole so I knew it was getting masked somehow yep bent iron nail so I was I didn't check it in multi the uh, multi frequency but yeah this was definitely masking it let's just make sure Might just be a hot rock. Okay, on to the next. We've got a perfect pull tab signal here for nickel. Now watch, I bet if I go down to multi-frequency, it's going to be a 12-13. I swear to God, I didn't know that was going to happen. I just called it. Okay, let's dig it. Now there's a situation where both multi and single frequency can both get fooled because this aluminum is thick enough and compact enough that it's disguised itself like a nickel or a gold ring. Now, it seems so simple, but there's so many different types of aluminum you run into. And some of them will fool both and some of them we're gonna find out in our tests today that um, you can actually distinguish between the two. So it's not always the same, and we're trying to find different methods to, to get past these little pesky beasts. All right, see you on the next one. Okay, so here's a great example of how I check bottle caps. So both 15 kilohertz and multi are showing one bar on the depth meter, extremely shallow, but when I switch to multi, it goes down to the 15 target ID range. So let's go ahead and just plug my detector in here. And let's get out the pinpointer. Because it's not going to be that deep. <laughs> I just can't even remember where my target went. Come on. There we go. 
There we go. Bottle cap, right on the surface. Now that's gonna vary to a certain degree if it's an older bottle cap and it's deeper. And of course the bottle tops, the twist offs are, are gonna, the thicker ones, you know, that don't have the crown. These are crown caps really, right? Bottle tops, the twist off, those are gonna fool both multi-frequency and single frequency most of the time. But uh, these guys, we can avoid. All right, on to the next. Okay, here's the bottle cap trick with a uh, single frequency and multi. Okay, right, now check this out. saw how it goes right down to um, when you're in single it stays up in the 20s went 20 25 26 20 25 26 but when you hit multi it goes 25 like 14 25 14 so it goes way down into the teens that's a clear sign that's a bottle cap here is a example of how <clears throat> The, hopefully you guys can hear this the how iron has a like a twang so this is the closest example so far I could find of this all right so now let's move. 45 degrees. See how it hits iron one way? Good number the other way. Now watch if I try to narrow in. Okay, so before I keep uh, sweeping over this, I think I have something that's probably going to end up being a disappearing target. And we're going to check at both angles. By disappearing, I mean something sounds good um, amidst a bunch of iron and then it starts to actually get worse. The signal gets worse. Um, you turn 45 degrees, it sounds even better or maybe a little less better. Then you turn back to the way you were and it actually sounds worse than before. So let's see if we can get this to come out more, or if the signal gets worse, or if the signal actually starts to move, uh, as if it's literally moving and shifting across the ground. So let's take a look. So you notice I moved up about an inch and it started to get a little worse. Now I'm going to move up another inch. And notice how I'm getting a bigger iron signal now. Now I'm coming back down. And I can make it sound a little bit better. And I move further down. And that's the sweet spot. Okay, now let's turn 45 degrees. So we think 
you're sweeping and you think you've got a sweet target and you think the center of it is right about there right where this to the left of my coil right because if i sweep that's where i think it is but what happens is you end up turning 45 degrees pivoting on the center of the target and and there's what i'm talking about right there target reveals itself just one big piece of iron whether i go up or i go down okay on to the next one multi square now or actually interestingly more like a triangle now so right where I found that silver ring literally right next to it let's see what single frequency says Single frequency is jumping like that. Let's go to multi. No multi is doing it. Let's turn 45. Okay, let's give it a try. So I'm going to recheck the hole, but I think that was this little old tack. The circular nature of it uh, really tricks the machine, but you can see that multi was actually reporting this was a little cleaner than single frequency this time. Let's recheck the hole. I'll be right back. Okay, interesting. That was actually this, which looks like it's a part of an old iron spoon. I guess they made spoons out of iron at one time. I don't know. Could be something else, but looks like the end of a spoon. All right. Or a fork or whatever. 
anyway it was quite deep and it was um, way over to the side of the hole with the way iron usually tricks it so I'll rescan one more time but I think that was it all right cheers okay well this hole is proving to be very interesting let me turn the volume up so there's a few things that are uh, even though I took that part of spoon out and that little tack there's a few things that are making me extremely suspicious here about this hole number one listen watch what happens when I do this Now in my blog post, I talk about this. Whenever you get a good repeatable signal like this, the falsing could come from here, 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 or back here. Okay, so if we take this plug out of the way, we see that there's big iron here at the back of the coil and there's big iron here at the top of the coil we also see that the depth meter is showing really deep but the signal is really loud if we go to 15 kilohertz it's also getting full if we turn 45 degrees we get a one wire thing is that the signal is breaking up more sound really good right there but it's really loud so what we're gonna do is we're gonna dig again I'm gonna dig this hole out again uh, if it's not down there, then that was that was an iron halo, and we're just making the halo sound better and better. I'm almost positive it's a halo because the signal broke up here. But I could be wrong, so let's see. Now this target sounds like a small piece of silver jewelry. It 
it's a because it's on the surface and it's a really kind of short signal but it's clean I can tell it's it's gonna be small and look how consistent it is let's see what multi frequency says exact same numbers you can see multi-frequency kind of freak out because it's a there's a little more emi here but i go back to 15 and it's quiet as a mouse but um yeah so when single and multi both agree with each other that much and they're both really clean you know it's going to be something interesting could be trash but could be something interesting let's check it out okay so we were right right in the plug is a silver ring It's a great example of how you get clean. Cons I mean, it was so on the surface, the, t the target ID was so perfect. I mean, if this had been deeper, I guarantee the target ID would have been, it would have been clean and clear, but it may have jumped a little bit more than what we saw there. You can see it has some interesting markings around it. Yep, just a little silver ring. All right, on to the next. So this is another interesting signal that I'm trying to get to come out, but I can't tell if it's gonna start disappearing. So. Since I've swept over it a few times, it might actually have already sort of uh, deteriorated. But let me... See, the signal's kind of moving. To the left, do you see that? And now it's iron. So I tried going up a little bit. Tighten my sweep even more. Okay, now we're gonna pivot 45 right on the spot. See if I go down, the signal gets a little better. So let's go to multi frequency. So it's giving me a good uh, high number one way in a uh, 16, 15 the other direction. Let's pivot. And again, it feels like the signal is kind of moving to the left. Two good numbers.
Okay, so I'm getting a good number both ways. So it feels like something's trying to come out. Pivot. Okay, let's dig this. Okay, so that was a deep iron nail. So that was uh, multi giving me a clean signal both ways. I can't remember what single frequency was doing, but uh, I'm not saying and never saying one is better than another. They're just just use them to check. I I would have dug that regardless of whether I'd switched over to multi frequency. So I'm not saying one is better than the other, but that's how they, we get fooled. Cheers. Okay, I have a fantastic faint signal here. And I wanted to see if it deteriorated or not. That sounds great, right? You guys see the numbers? Now, watch what happens when I switch to multi. I haven't done this yet, so I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, so before we learned that if we're in single and we switch to multi frequency and it goes way down below 10, then we should be suspicious. Depending on the depth meter, which isn't accurate at all really, and the loudness especially, you want to listen to the loudness of it. It goes really loud, but listen. This is about, multi is always going to be a little louder, but this isn't much louder at all. Now I haven't turned 45 degrees yet. And I just did, and it sounds great. You can see there's iron in the hole because it's fighting the iron, but can you hear how there's something very repeatable? It's not like mm, iron, then a good signal, then some iron signal, then good signal. It's just there's iron trying to come through every now and then, but it's... I can still get that good signal to come out through all that iron repeatedly. Now here... I'm a little worried because it's deteriorating a little bit when I turn 45 again. Nope. If I slow it down... I can get it again. Let's go back to, let's see 10 kilohertz. Hmm, that one's breaking up a lot. 15? Now I'm a little worried because my signals started to deteriorate, so that should always be cause for concern, but it shouldn't cause you to give up completely on it. There's other things you should be checking. Because I can tighten this signal into one spot so easily, 
and it's so repeatable I'm, I would definitely dig this if I were on my own so let's dig it now okay everybody so here we go we got it the this is only seven inches deep it's looking like silver it's rosy Looks like 1940. So, I'll recheck the hole, but we got one. Not bad. Um, repeatable. Both directions. Everything good. Cheers. See you on the next one. Well, I got an interesting one here. Sounds like something's trying to come through. Could just be a big piece of iron fooling me. Okay, I'm gonna... Jesus. That was this tiny little silver humming well, bird thing. I don't even know if it's a pendant or an, or an earring, but that's, that's a bird with like this super ornate uh, wing. I can't believe that. That thing was... That was like... Uh, you know, six and a half inches deep. This thing is freaking tiny and it was smacking it. Wow. So this is a very interesting signal. And then 15 kilohertz. You can hear how faint it is, the depth meter is deep. If I do uh, my tips on going to either the back, the top, the side, or the other side of the coil, and sort of feeling my way around it, well, there's some big iron up there. <laughs> and over there. And over there, and down here. So I'm already getting suspicious. So I'm gonna go to multi, see what that says. Sounds a little funky, doesn't it? Let's turn sideways. tightening my sweep here. It's a very strange signal, it kind of flickers. Let's turn backwards.
ahead and go to 10 kilohertz. Sounds perfect, doesn't it? Let's see what Park 1 sounds like. Very interesting signal. Okay, let's dig this. So, look what was in the center of the hole. Smack dab in the center. Bent nail. Always fools detectors. And then, check this out. Lots of brick around here. Alright, see you on the next one. Multi-frequency now. Never good when multi-frequency takes it down that low. But that was a giant iron ring literally about two and a half feet down. I just dug for like an hour. I'm back at the park where I found all that stuff on the surface and literally right in this, I mean, the top, I find a 19, 1957 silver dime. Right on top of the soil. Doesn't get easier than that, boys. And girls. <laughs> Cheers. See you on the next one. Oh, here we go again. Literally right on the top. 1936. Beautiful shape. I think it's a D. That's a beautiful coin. Alright, let you know if I find anything else. 20 hitting 25, 26, 27 on the equinox with a 15 inch coil. Mm -hmm.